Good day and welcome to Fiddlespun. Today we'll be working the garter edge heel flap. It's actually my favorite part of the sock, so I'm excited to share this with you. So here we go. I just finished the leg of my sock and I'm at the beginning of the round. And what I want to do is maintain this as the front of my sock because when I'm knitting I use the tail to check the beginning of the round. So I'm going to pop over here to the back needle and start with a wrong side purling row. So at this point if you're on DPNs you'll just count backwards half your stitches and have those on one needle while the other two hang out up front. So I'm starting here and I've brought the yarn to the back of my work and I'm going to start with three knit stitches and then purl across. And this will be the same for every wrong side row. You'll knit three stitches and purl across. So don't yank on the first stitch. On the second stitch here, before I dismount, I give the working yarn a small tug to snug it up. And then I'm off here. The trick is to make your garter ridge bumps at the beginning of each row. And so since we're on a purling row right now, when we do knit stitches, they turn into purl bumps on the right side of the work. Okay, here we go, row one done did my three knits and purled across. Now I'll turn my work. And this is our slip stitch pattern row. So it'll be a two row repeat for a slip stitch heel flap. Brought my yarn to the front and I'm starting with three purls. And then I will do my pattern across to the edge and maintain my garter border on the last three stitches. So our pattern is knit slip. Again we'll knit slip across to the end to the last three stitches and just knit them plain. It'll be easy to identify these last stitches because you just made purl bumps. So it'll be easy to catch yourself if you start slipping stitches on the edge. Here we are, ending with a slip stitch, and then I'm knitting these last three. So we purled our first three stitches, worked our knit slip pattern across, and ended with three knits to maintain our border. So you could probably see the pattern on my heel flap was the eye of the partridge. So this makes a checkered pattern. You'll just stagger your knit slip, and then on your next time on the knit side, you'll do slip knit. And so I've popped the pattern up here for you. I'm starting with my knits, snug the second stitch, and then I'll be purling across like always. So this is where the beauty of this pattern comes in. So I'm going to be working my partridge row next, and so the way it turns out is the odd rows are slip stitch pattern, and the even rows are partridge. So I'll show you how to count that here in a second. One of the deterrents for some people while making a heel flap is simply just keeping track of where you are and counting the rows and then also picking up the stitches. So we got all those things covered in this pattern and it just makes it really fun to work. So first I bring my yarn to the front and make my purl bumps. And then I'll move over to the side here and count up the edge. So 
So you can see the garter pattern makes these straight squiggles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So I am on an even even number of bumps, so I start slip knit. I'm doing my partridge row. Again, you'll work to the edge and then maintain your garter border with plain knits. Ending with a slip knit and then knitting the last three. So on the partridge row, you're actually knitting the last four stitches in a row. And there we are. So I'm making my heel flap 32 rows long. So I'm going for 16 ridges. I'll count them one more time with you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 on the needle. All right, I finished my heel flap. The number of rows you'll want to work is equal to half your total amount of stitches. So for a 64 stitch cast on, you'll work a 32 row heel flap with 16 ridges as I've done here. I've cast on 56 stitches. So you'll notice on this step, I'll have a slightly smaller count. And again, like we started the heel flap, we're going to start on a pearl side row. And we start by slipping the first stitch. This is our chance to give it a little snug. And then we purl across half the amount of stitches we're working on our heel flap. So like I said, I cast on 56, so my heel flap is 28 wide. So I'm purling half that, 14. So for you, if you're a 64 stitch cast on and a 32 wide, you're gonna purl 16. And for a 36 wide, you'll pour out 18, and so on. So I'll give it a count. Slip one plus half. And then we'll perform our decrease. I'm going to purl two together, plus one more. Every time we decrease on this step, we'll do it like this. Decrease and then purl one more. This is the part of the pattern that we need to hard memorize. So that was setup row one. And now setup row two starts the same. We'll slip the first stitch, give a little snug, and then we work three. And then we're going to do our decrease, which is a slip slip knit, and then work one more. So like I said, this is the only memorization part of the pattern. So now we have a little centerpiece here with two outside portions. And after each knit row, you can give these outside ones a count. They should be an even number and be matching. So I'm all good, I have 10 on each side. Now we're to the part that we just repeat till we've worked all the stitches. Flip it over and slip your first stitch. Give it a little snug. Then I'm going to purl across to the gap. Okay, here we are to the gap. There's one piece on either side and I'll do my decrease, purl two together, then work one more. Turn your work and then same thing on the front. Slip the first stitch, give her a little snug, work over to the gap, do your decrease, which is slip, slip, knit, and work one more. Now we 
completed our front row and I'm gonna just give it one more double check. I'm gonna count both sides. Now I have eight on both sides. So we're making a small triangle here. You can see we just did a left decrease on our front side. Then when we're on the back and we do purl two together, that makes us go to the right from the front side. All right, so now I'm going to speed it up and work through these repeats. Uh, just to describe a little more, this step is overall a decrease step, and we're going to end with a small, small amount of stitches on our needle, about 18 to 20. Then after that, we'll continue working from right to left, like always, and we're going to work down the side of the heel flap and pick up stitches. Be sure to keep checking your stitch count after you complete right side rows. And we're going to finish on a knit row, and then we'll be ready to work down the side of the heel flap. So I'll see you there. final one. I'm doing my slip slip knit and then I have one stitch. Alright I'm at the end here doing my slip slip knit and then the last stitch. And there we go. I'm going to give it a little count. There should be an even number here. Now we're ready to go on to the next step, picking up those stitches. So I'm going to keep working from right to left in the direction my needle's going, like always. Okay, I need to pull the needle through to work, so I'm giving myself some cord. And now again, another fun part. I really enjoy this part. You just got to take your time and go slow. So I'll zoom in here, and there will be several examples in a row. So the garter squiggle is broken into three strands, and I like to go for the middle one here. It does not matter actually whatsoever which one you go for. Just try to go for the same strand all the way down the edge, and it'll look nice and tidy. So when you poke in there, don't be shy. Go ahead and give it a nice little tug to see if it comes up and if it doesn't come up easily you might have a small split thread or just try grabbing into a different one um, so you'll see I poke into them a couple times sometimes to check for split threads and then you'll just pull the thread through as if you're knitting sometimes it can be 
tough to tell if you're working into the stitch you just did or into the next squiggle. So it's helpful to spread your work and keep it nice and taut if you can. And you'll see I'm knitting from my left hand continentally, so if you're an English knitter, um, just knit as if you would normally um, wrapping the yarn counterclockwise. And so you'll see that's the one I just worked. I gotta go to the next one. And so just go slow and enjoy this part. You'll see that center thread gets a little tighter as you go down the edge. So just give it a nice little tug and it should come right up. And then the last one here can be tough to choose which sometimes, but there we go. And now give it a count to make sure we have the right number. 16 ridges for me. Okay, so we get to pick up our extra stitch in the corner. And another thing I love about this pattern is it comes out perfect every time. There's not a hole. So you drop your working thread and then give your other needle a little slack so you can pull it around to help you work on this step. So you go here to the top ladder, and we're going to follow it over. So it leads us over here, not to that top live stitch, but the one right underneath. And then we grab that inside leg, the right leg of the stitch. Then we'll just go right across that, across the ladder to the other one and get the inside leg. That'd be the left one here. And I'm working into a purl stitch here, so I gotta dive kinda deep. And stretch her out there, look, see if there's any split threads. And you can really just go in there and check it out. And our goal here is to knit into the back loop, so I'm just arranging my needles here. Go slow, make sure you don't have any split threads. You can give it one more check and then knit through the back loop. So we just used a leg from each stitch on either side of that ladder. Knit through the back loop and then give it another count. I have 16 plus my one extra. And then you can pull your cord all the way through. I love this part. And that's the back side of our sock. Now we turn our work and then we work across the front. And then we'll go up the other edge. So this part is important too. I have a four row pattern and I've worked it here so I'm starting on a knit row. But just be aware of your pattern and continue on the foot here. From here on out. My pattern comes in real handy when I'm keeping track of my alternating decreasing rows coming up. So that's one plus of doing a texture pattern. And now we'll turn here, and this time we start with picking up our stitch. So I'll need to pull my cord around so I can pull my needle through. And so you'll see, our ladder is now attached to that stitch two stitches down, so we'll want to make sure to use that one. And straight across from it, I have another knit this time. Hey, that was a little better. And then this part, getting it ready to knit in the back loop. Just be careful not to split the thread. Make sure to double check. 
and we got our stitch. So on this side, you might notice one slightly enlarged st stitch, but on your way around on your next um, first time knitting into these picked up stitches, we'll just give that one a nice little snug and you won't even be able to notice it after washing them. Um, I have inspected some of my completed socks though and noticed that on this one corner, this from pulling those two legs of the stitches, um, it makes one of them on the edge look a little larger, uh, but not a big deal. So this time I'm also working into the center strand and it's backwards going in this direction so it it might be a little harder to pull up so just take your time Yeah, uh, as I said earlier, that large stitch doesn't bother me at all, but this is perfect. There's never any holes, and it's just super solid. I use this heel as my go-to for any pattern. I just plug this right in. Since I've been casting on less stitches for a nice snug cuff, I enjoy being able to knit this longer heel flap, and then that makes the gusset part right on the top of my foot there fit more appropriately otherwise it might be too tight if I just did the standard short row heel with that few stitches and so this has really I've dialed in the recipe and it my socks are starting to fit better and better each time We'll count them here. I got my 16 ridges plus one. And now I'll put my other needle through and I'll just continue working here along the back of the sock. And we'll go immediately into the gusset decreasing. Now we're going to use this center heel as our beginning of round for this step. So you'll see, I'm going to start with my first decrease here at the edge. I'll stop at the last three stitches, and this time I'm going to do a right-leaning decrease, knit two together, and then work the last stitch. So I'm wanting the stitches to point inward here, towards the inside of my foot. Because now that we have all these extra stitches, we're going to start decreasing, and this will make a nice snug line down the side of our ankle. So yep, again, the center is our beginning of round. I just did my first decrease, and then we'll hit the back side again with a decrease after we finish the front here. So as I said, my pattern helps me keep track. So on this pearl texture, I know I'm working a decrease round. And then my plain knits are plain knit rounds. If you're working a plain vanilla sock, it can be a little trickier to keep track of if you're on a plain knit round or a decrease round. So I'll zoom in the camera here soon and show you how to identify your decrease stitches to keep track of where you're at. So now we're going to do our work one and then our left leaning slip slip knit. And I'm gonna show you the one move slip slip knit. You go in the first stitch knit wise and then go in the second stitch through the back loop and pull the working thread through where you came. Now you have a chance to tidy that up by pulling on the back side. And then I snugged my working yarn to snug the corner. 
Slip slip knits can look pretty wobbly, so I really like that you can make them look tidy. I learned that while I was knitting a lace shawl. And so when I get to the end here, I'm going to zoom in and show you what the decrease looks like. And I'm going to stop one stitch before. So the decrease here is in the second to last stitch, the one in the middle. So you'll see here, there's a single loop coming through the two stitches there. And that single is my decrease, not the row with the two stitches smashed together. So I'll knit these and then zoom back in. So you'll see that the decrease is the single loop coming through the two, not the row with the two. So you see there's my double stitch with the single coming through, and then, then one more knit I just performed on the needle. So on my way back around, I'll be able to see that I need to decrease next. And so that's the pattern. You'll work in this way, doing a decrease round and then a plain knit until you're back to your half your total stitches. So I'll continue decreasing until I have 28 and then you're home free. You just work until you get till the toe decreases. And with that, we're at the end of the video. So we worked through the whole heel flap, then we did the heel turn and picked up our stitches around the edges to get back in the round. And then we are doing our gusset decreases. So here we go. Yeah, it doesn't get any better than that. I just love this pattern. So I hope that some of these tips were helpful to you. And if you do give this a try, tag me on Instagram at Fiddlespun. And I'd love to see how it turns out for you. Anyways, till next time.